Okay, welcome to the Code Room, presented by Stathole Sports, putting humor and entertainment to sports statistics writing, or at least trying. Uh, this is a concept video I'm doing. If you're a Stathole follower and you just enjoy the funny articles um, and you're not a coder, you're probably not going to care about this. Uh, but for the R users out there, if you're learning uh, R and you want to kind of look and see what I do under the hood, that's kind of the idea here. Um, <clears throat> and I'm giving you the courtesy down below to let you know where you can skip. Uh, so if you want to do that, be my guest. That's where the coding starts. Uh, you're going to do it anyway, so I may as well help you out. But real quickly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my blog and what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to, you know, um, put some humor into sports statistics writing. Not as smart as, you know, a lot of the writers from the outlets you probably follow. Uh, so I'm trying to attempt to make up for it by being entertaining and incorporating some roasting humor, that type of thing. So I just figure I'll give you a, a quick taste of some things that I've covered. I've written a series of articles on my creation of fantasy football wins above replace uh, of above replacement with uh, fantasy pros. So uh, hopefully that gives me some cred. On my site, I've looked into the QB age clip theory and break down why I think it's bunk. Uh, this was a theory if you're not familiar with it, developed by a statistician who's forgotten more about statistics than I'll probably ever know. But that doesn't mean that I'm wrong. So uh, anyway, you can check it out and see for yourself who you think is right there. I've also looked at this past year's down year in the NFL in field goal accuracy. And um, ends with a top five list of the worst NFL field goal kicking teams in NFL merger history. That was pretty fun to uh, research. But my favorite column was the Tankful Week 6 Dolphins versus Redskins. Personal favorite, even though it's well past, um, you should still check it out. It's it's pretty funny, hopefully. Um, and, you know, to keep people on their toes, I connected uh, NFL field goal kicking accuracy trends uh, since the 1970s to global warming, a totally legit, not satirical piece of investigative journalism. Yeah, uh, it's not all NFL, though. I've dabbled in NBA as well, and I took a look at the most clutch player in the playoffs to today. Uh, and, you know, I hope to do a little bit more on NBA as I get more data on it, uh, as well as other sports. But anyway, this is just a, a little taste of some of the things I've written about. But today, we're going to talk about running the ball in the NFL. So, um, you've likely heard or seen numerous people cite that NFL teams who run the ball X times are, you know, 40-0 or 20-0 or whatever. And they use this as some sort of prescriptive recipe for teams um, to apparently use to win, win games. Uh, obviously, this is just a correlation doesn't equal causation cliche. Uh, and that's why that cliche is a cliche, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, I wanted to take, take a look at this and... Uh, look at the run-pass ratios for winning teams uh, in the NFL <clears throat> before they take a lead. So I want to cut out all of the plays, you know, after they take a lead when they are likely to uh, run the ball more. Um, and then I want to take it a step further. I want to take, uh, let's take all the winning teams that were down X and just look between the time that they were down X and the time and when they came back to tie or take the lead. So I'll kind of show you through an example of what I mean by that. Um, and what kind of led me to want to look at it that way was this column here by the Tampa Bay Times. So Tampa Bay Times guy uh, claims that abandoning the run game even when behind is no winning formula. So this was uh, this was the idea I kind of wanted to put to the test. If Tampa Bay Times guy is right, we should see a trend from winning uh, teams that support this. So, um, let me let me just show you an example, I guess, of, of what I'm trying to do. So, let's take the 2019 division round of the playoffs, the Chiefs and the Texans, for an example. So, we all know the Chiefs won this game actually pretty handily, but they were down 24 to nothing early before coming back. Uh, to win the game. So in in this research, what I would be doing is I would be s stripping out all plays before the the uh, the Chiefs are down um, 24 points. 
and then I'd be stripping out plays that uh, occurred after they either tied or took the lead. So I kind of mapped this out for you here, a drive-by-drive drive scoring uh, chart for that game. And um, so these would be the plays that we would be interested in. So what is the run-pass ratio between drive four uh, and the end of drive eight? So this is the time when the Chiefs were down 24 points, but they uh, came back uh, to, to tie or take the lead. So um, in this game, I think there was only 18 plays in between this time, and 15 of them were passes. Um, and then two of the rushes were by Patrick Mahomes. So, um, yeah, anyway, a little bit of uh, foreshadowing there. But obviously we don't just want to look at one game. We want to look at multiple games. So I looked at every game since 2009 um, in the regular season. So technically that playoff game wouldn't have even counted, but it's just an example. And I used NFL Scraper for that. It's um, an amazing package of, uh, of NFL football data, and basically it has every recorded play in the NFL since 2009. So uh, we're going to head over to, to R now, and we're going to use that package to uh, see what we can find here. Okay, so here we are in our studio. Um, I've already loaded the uh, the data frame in here so it's got all of the uh, NFL scraper data from 2009 to um, somewhere up to like November of 2019 when I wrote this column and you can see there's 277 variables in here we're gonna cut that down in just a minute because uh, we don't need all those for this but um, so I'll kind of show you what I did here uh, in just a second, but let's just take a look at, I'm going to run all of this, and um, then I'll kind of walk you through what all of this is. Um, but I do want to at least show you the, the columns in um, the data set that I'm going to be starting with. So as you can see, I just took it down from, you know, 278 to 15 columns. Um, so we're only looking at columns that either we're going to need for analysis or that are just kind of good to reference. So I've got the season, game ID, quarter, uh, these you know are, are mostly pretty obvious, possession team, um, and then the, the total home score and total away score. Uh, so the, this, this is the score at the time. And uh, so over here, these are the three, uh, three columns that I feature engineered, which I'll show you how I did it, but just to explain what they are, play type two is just, I'm, I'm recoding play type so that runs are one and passes are zero. And um, you'll notice that there's no kickoffs or field goals or anything else in there because I'm filtering that out. Um, and then we've got the winning team. So there's another couple of columns that ha that's, it's not total away score or total home score, it's just home score and away score, which is the final score of the game. I didn't put that in here because uh, I don't really need it, but that's uh, I'll, I'll show you that I use those columns to generate whether the team with the ball won the game or not. And so obviously there's a one for the winning team and a zero for the losing team. And then the differential is um, the point differential for that team, obviously, at the time. So pretty self-explanatory if it's kind of scroll down a little bit here. Uh, differential is six here. It looks like, you know, that team scored a touchdown. Um, yeah, and they did, so they scored a touchdown, so they're up six. And then the next team, you know, after the kickoff, has the ball. They are down zero to seven, so Miami. And so you can see that it, the differential is minus seven. Okay, so <clears throat> just to kind of quickly show you how I did that for um, play type two. So just changing uh, run and pass to a one or a zero. Just a simple if-else uh, statement here. Um, if it says run, then give it a one. Otherwise, give it a zero. Okay, for the winning team column, I used a, a deplier call called case one. And this is looking at um, a number of possibilities and assigning a one or a zero. So we want a one if the team, if the possession team won the game and a zero if they didn't. So um, you can see here for the first one, if the home team, uh, if the possession team equals the home team and that home score. So again, this is the final uh, score. Um, if that final score is greater than the away score, 
then obviously the home team won, so I'll give it a 1. And you can kind of look through these to see, you know, the logic um, of it makes sense uh, so that we know whether every team uh, won or lost the game. So that's the winning team column. And then the last column I created here is the differential. So uh, just another if else call here. They're very handy. If the possession team is the home team, then the differential is going to equal the home score minus the away score. And again, this is the total home minus total away. Uh, it kind of seems counterintuitive because you would think total would be the end of the game. But for some reason, that's not the case. So um, you just got to deal with that, I guess. I could have cleaned that up, but I didn't. Um, and then if that's not the case, so if the possession team is not the home team, it can only be the away team. And so the differential then would be away score minus home score. All right, so that's how we created the differential. Next thing I did was I filtered out all the plays that aren't run or pass because we just want to look at, um, you know, at at those plays. And then I selected the columns that I wanted, and that's why, and that's how I got to 15 instead of 278. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on here. Just a couple of baseline statistics here. So what you know out of out of this newly created data set, what is the um, average <coughs> NFL average for uh, rush to pass ratio? So I did it for the whole data set, and then I did it again just for 2009, just to give a little context, kind of get a feel for what we're playing with here. And you can tell 2009 is a little bit lower than um, the whole of the 10 to 11 years of data we have. Um, kind of makes sense as teams are you know starting to uh, pass more in the NFL. But for the most part, it's still, you know, pretty stable. So we have a pretty good idea of what we're working with here. <laughs> All right, so the next thing <clears throat> is I want to filter this again. And I'm going to give it a new name now, my um, my database. I'm going to call it all dot winners, And I'm just simply going to filter out all the winning teams, or all the teams that aren't a winning team. So I just want winning team equals one. Um, if you look over here... <sighs> You can see that there's almost half the amount of data in all winners as there is in, in, in DF, which is what we want. Okay, so now I'm kind of ready to do um, the more, I guess, uh, the, the more difficult work in stripping out plays before a team gets down and then stripping out plays after a team catches up. Okay, so... This here, I'm going to do, I'm going to make a function out of all of this, but I just want to show you an example of of what one iteration would be. So I'm going to make this, um, this data, this data frame, remove prior plays. And, you know, basically, let's say we want to see uh, what teams who are down by 15 points, the ratio of run to pass between the time they are down 15 points and when they catch up. Well, the first thing we need to do is strip out all of the plays leading up to when they're down 15. And that's what this call is going to do. And it's going to do it for every game uh, because we group by the game ID. And we also group by the possession team. Um, so that helps uh, make this all uh, work. And then really the magic kind of comes in line 51 here with the, uh, the, the filter, the filtering here. So let's see what's going on. So we, let's start here. So differential is less than or equal to minus 15. So this is a logical and, um, it's either going to be yes or no. So a zero or one, um, so it's going to filter out all plays in which um, this is not, uh, or, I'm sorry, it's, it, it's going to filter out all plays which are equal to zero because it wants to find an instance in which the differential is um, less than minus 15. So it could be minus 16, 17, minus 20, whatever. So long as it's greater than zero, it's going to keep it. And it'll filter out all the rest. But this uh, come sum here is what really helps us because, uh, you know, at the start of the game, the differential is going to be zero, right? And it's going to be zero for a while. 
Um, then maybe a team gets scored on, it's minus 7. Uh, they get scored on again, it's minus 14. It still hasn't reached um, minus 15, so it's still going to be uh, it's still going to be zero. So it's still going to get so that play is going to get removed from the data until it gets to this minus 15. Once it hits minus 15, well now the cumulative sum. So um, all so that play is going to be a one, and now it's going to be greater than zero. So it's going to keep that play when it when a team gets down minus 15. Now let's say the team is down minus 15, but they uh, they score and are now um, you know more than minus 15. Say they're minus uh, 12 or whatever. It's still going to keep that play and every play after because it's a cumulative sum. So it's all it's always including that first instance of minus 15 and every play after. That's about as good as I think I can do a job of explaining that. So let's just remove this and I'll uh, show you that it works. Okay. All right, so, <clears throat> so we're gonna do a test here. So I'm gonna take the original data frame with all the plays and we're gonna just look at this particular game, okay? All right, so there's 110 um, plays in this game uh, it's Carolina versus Washington, and let's scroll to the end here. So the differential you see at the start of the game, obviously it's zero, and it starts um, to change here. Let's filter down to where we get to either minus 15 or lower. Let's kind of scroll here. Okay, here we go. So here is the pl first play, which a team is down 15 points, and... Um, We'll take the play ID here is two two six three, right? All right, so just remember that. Let's go now to um, remove prior plays, and I think this is the same. Yeah, it's the same uh, game here. So you'll see in remove prior plays, the very first play of the game, the differential is minus fifteen, and it's that same play ID that we had. So uh, we can tell that it did its job in filtering out all the plays before that uh, and, you know, keeping all the plays after. Okay, and if we scroll down here, we can go to the next game. Looks like it's, um, yeah, New Orleans and Miami. So that first play of that game is minus 21, which is what we want to see. So you, you can tell that it obviously filtered out all the plays before, um, looks like, uh, one of these teams, uh, New Orleans, went down 21 and then continues on with the rest of the game. Okay, so just checking the data there a little bit. <clears throat> so the next thing we need to do is we need to take out the plays in which the team that was down 15 um, after they come back to either tie or take the lead, we want to take all the rest of the plays out. And um, the lag function is going to be added to this in order to help us do that. So, real quickly, I'll kind of show uh, what the lag function is. So let's take a vector 1 through 25 and r let's run a lag on it in a few different ways. So, um, down here, We've got just, you know, lag of test, um, of test lag, which is that vector we created. So you can tell it removes the, the last <laughs> entry, which is 25, does it on all three of these. Um, but for the first, the first way of doing it, it, it gives an NA, uh, which we don't want. We want to preserve, uh, you know, this would be a, a single play, the first play of the game, and we want to keep that. And uh, so we're actually going to do the one where it says default equals true so that we preserve this first play. Um, and then, yeah, we don't want default equals false, I think, because it makes this a zero. And um, we again, this was the way to do it in order to preserve all of the plays. And there's probably a better explanation for that, um, but it just seemed to work. So. Let's come back up here to the call. 
so you'll notice we are making this data frame, uh, we're naming it remove post plays, and we're starting from what we just did, remove prior plays. So this is a data frame that already stripped out the, the plays before the deficit of 15. Uh, so now we want to remove the plays after. So again, uh, same thing here, grouping uh, in the same way. But uh, this time we want, we're looking for a differential that's either greater or equal to zero instead of less than, right? Because we want to we want to look for the instance in which um, in which this is greater than zero. So uh, if so long as that equals zero, which means it is not greater or equal to zero, we're going to keep it. And um, it, once it hits one, so that would mean that the differential is now um, greater than or equal or greater than, than zero. So the team came back to tie or take the lead. Then it's going to take the rest of them all out. And then I selected by, um, I took the description out, I guess, at this point, uh, just because I didn't need it anymore. But so I'm going to run this real quickly. All right, so let's take a quick look at that. Move post plays. Yeah. All right, so now what we should see is we've got that same game ID. So let's go back, let's go back to test because this was the, um, this was that complete game. So we should see the differential here start from zero, yeah, and go all the way to the end. So let's see what happens in this game here. I've got, here's the minus 15, and you'll remember our data, our other data frame stripped out all plays prior to that. And Let's, um, you'll notice this is eight here because Washington has the ball. They were the team that was in the lead, so don't get too confused about that. We're looking for, um, we're looking for when, I think, yeah, when Carolina comes back um, to either tie or take the lead, and that is, looks like here. Yeah, it looks like, um, let's see if this was a, Touchdown pass. Yeah, Jonathan Stewart up the middle. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so it looks like it happens here on play number um, 3167 or thereabouts. All right, so if we go here, the last play that we should see in, um, in our main database now should be that, that play. So let's... Scroll down here. Oop, I think I went too far. There we go. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, I've got play ID three two one two. Uh, so I guess that was the last, the last play, three two one two. Yeah. So it's the play where he scored the touchdown, um, and that's when it when it changes to one here. So. So great. And then it moves it moves on to the next game, and as you can tell, there's a lot of games in here. So um, this is all set up now for us to uh, run our analysis. <clears throat> okay. And it looks like I ran just a simple mean of um, of our database here of what the run pass ratio is for teams that come back in a game. So you'll notice it's a lot lower than the NFL average. Now we're looking about 32%. So um, in general, regardless of, you know, the deficit teams are passing a lot more when they are down in between the time that they are down and when they catch up to a game. And that's for every team. Well, not every team, but in general for every team, um, that comes back to win a game after being down. So right off the bat here, we can kind of tell that this idea that you need to uh, keep with your running game and, and stick to the plan is a bunch of bullshit. <clears throat> okay, so now we have our, our database all set up. 
we're not going to do any more filtering or feature engineering. It's all good to go. Um, now we need to make a function that kind of iterates all this. So again, I said that I'm, I'm really interested in, in looking at deficits of, well, it's not really zero to 20. It's, it's really one to 20. Let's change that. <clears throat> all right. So this is just a vector one to 20. Um, that's going to represent points down by a team. Okay. And now I'm going to make a function and it's just going to be called come back from, and it's just a function of X. And it's going to, what it's going to do is X is right here. It's going to put in, um, every number one through 20, and then it's got the minus sign in front of it. Um, and this is going to give us at the end, the average of that play type two. So this is going to be the rush percentage for all teams that come back in between the time that they're down X. So one through 20 and come back um, to either tie or take the lead, which is what, you know, again, this is, these are the same calls that I uh, did up above with the example of minus 15. Okay. So let me make this function real quick. And all right, so now down here, I'm using the uh, map function from per. The map double uh, is going to create a vector and it's going to iterate through all of these one through 20. Um, that's what the, I put in here. So I'm telling it to um, iterate through one through 20, insert that into this function, uh, come back from and name it percentages. Uh, so let's run that. Take just a second. Okay. And let's type it in here. Cool. So here we go. So here are all the percentages. Um, you can see when teams are down by one, they run the ball 40% of the time. Um, you know, one deficits of one, two, three, the, the lower deficits are, are not going to be really as meaningful to be honest, but you know, it just kind of completes the, the circuit here. And you'll just kind of, you can just eyeball this. You can see that as deficits increase, the percentages of running go down. And this is again for our population of winning teams in the NFL for the last 10, almost 11 years. Okay. Now, before I graph it, uh, I needed to kind of make this into a data frame. So I'm going to um, make a data frame with down X and percentages. Uh, just to get ready for the graphing. We'll call that graph data. So hit that and just take a quick look at it. So yeah, so pretty much pretty easy. This is how much, how many points a team is down and their ru rush percentage in between the time that they were down this amount of points and when they came back. One thing you might wonder is that, you know, for a team that's down 10, um, they're also going to be likely down maybe three or seven points before they're down 10. So uh, it is going to run both ways. So when that team is down three, it's going to include those plays in between three and 10 for the calculations of, you know, being down three. Um, but for, you know, when they're down 10, it doesn't do that. So just something to keep in mind. Okay. So let's make our graph. Here is the call for my graph. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be just to run it and then I'll kind of explain um, what, what and why I did everything I did in here. And this is, if you read the column, this is what the graph looks like that I put in the column. You'll notice it kind of cuts off the, and this says NFL average. I'm not sure why it's cutting that off, but in any case, <laughs> in any case, this is our, these are our, our results here. So a team down uh, one, uh, I had zero in here. And that's why I put zero in here. Cause I wanted to, to see, to show you that there is even a little difference in between uh, when a team's down zero and one. I'm going to go back and do that just, just for fun. So we're just going to redo all this run all this again and we'll run this again 
Okay. Just to show you that when the game is tied, uh, teams also run the ball a lot more than even when they're down just one. Okay, so <clears throat> you can kind of see it, the trends slowly go in favor of passing up until, you know, you get down either one point or between one score and two scores. Between seven and eight, there's a drop. And again, between two scores and three scores, there's another pretty stark drop in rush percentage. Uh, interesting enough, after you get to 18, it starts to creep up. And if you were to do this, if you were to run this to even more, to like 24, now the sample size drops considerably when you do this, but let's do that for fun, just to show you what happens. <clears throat> just simply increasing it to 24 up there, and then rerunning everything. Look at that. You'll, you'll see it starts to go up pretty considerably. So what's going on here? Um, what's going on here is that teams are starting to wave the white flag when they're down, you know, three scores or so. Um, even teams that come back to win the game, funny enough. So maybe they uh, have a break on, on defense or something goes their way and they end up uh, getting the courage to start passing more afterwards. But um, if you're looking for, you know, a, a point differential... Uh, in which teams start to pretty much wave the white flag. Obviously, it's going to depend on the amount of time that's in the game as well as other factors, but just in general, that's kind of it. Um, so I'll, I'll change this back, though, just because we want to get a look of what was used in the column. <coughs> Yeah, this was the graph used in the column. So just to kind of walk through what I did for each of these, I'll go ahead and so you can still kind of see the graph. I'm going to put this in the console so I can show it to you on the side. Okay, here's our graph. Move this over a little bit. All right. Okay, so just in our x on our x axis is that down x, so the the you know the zero to twenty, and then the percentages on um, on the y axis here, and then it's just a simple geo line, so just a line graph, and I added um, a geo point in there just to show the actual points. Um, uh, put you know breaks are, are zero to twenty there, so I just am labeling that down there, and I'm putting in an h line here. Um, so this number here is the NFL average rushing ac for across these 10 years. Uh, we did that up above, so I just kind of put that down there. Uh, put the title here, and if, um, a nifty little trick if you aren't aware. This, um, this slash n here pretty much creates a, a new line. So if, if you're ever running out of room, you can just use that... Uh, <coughs> That backslash there. Okay, and then I converted the labels to uh, a percent format using uh, by you know kind of cramming in the scales uh, percent format there, and this just is just the breaks that I put in here. Funny enough, I tried doing you know a point three colon. 0.44 and that doesn't work. I'm not sure why, so I just put in all the individual numbers. There might be a workaround to that, but I don't know it. Um, okay. Anything else interesting here? Oh, just the the gray lines to kind of represent the drop in percentage. I just did that manually by kind of playing around with uh, how big the size would need to be and where to actually plot it so that it kind of approximates, you know, in between those lines. You can kind of even tell it's not exact. Um, but I think it kind of gives the gives the impression. And, yeah, just a GM text to kind of put the NFL average um, on, on this particular, uh, this particular line here, the dashed line. And that's pretty much it. So, I'm going to wrap this up here. I know, um... I even went through, I, I kind of did the same thing 
but for teams that came back and uh, or for teams that lost after being up X, so I kind of did the flip of it in the article, and uh, I, I'm not going to go through that here because it's it's largely repetitive, but I can at least show you uh, what I found for that. So here's our NFL average again, and so for teams that blew a lead of X after being up X points, so it's pretty much the inverse. You can see that they got way too conservative. Not really a discernible pattern per se, or at least not one that I see, other than the fact that they ran the ball more than even the NFL average trying to protect that lead, and it didn't really work out for them. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to end there. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if this was entertaining or, or insightful to you, put some comments in down below, definitely give me a follow on Twitter. That's where I'm trying to grow my uh, following. Um, I post all my columns on there and, you know, dabble in funny reply tweeting and shit like that. So um, let me know what you think. Other than that, uh, that's it.